Greetings, and welcome to the Black Flame Podcast, where history and legends collide, where cryptids, the supernatural, and the paranormal run free. We are your hosts, Dan and John Leonard, and we are here to bring you stories of haunted places, creepy cryptids, and harrowing legends. So sit back and let us guide you through the world of the unexplained. Tonight we'll be covering The Admiral Fell In and The Crescent Hotel. So stick around to learn more about these two haunted hotels. If you ask any Marylander where their favorite spot in Baltimore is, there's a good chance that Fells Point will be high on the list. Known for its bustling nightlife, historical architecture, and scenic waterfront location, the area can be a picturesque example of ideal East Coast city living. Under the surface, however, lies a history that wasn't always so lighthearted. And if the legends are true, the Admiral Fell Inn still gives guests glimpses into the point's shady past. Lying near the southeastern corner of Baltimore City on the Patapsco River, Fells Point made for an ideal port back in the early days of American history. First identified as Long Island Point in 1670, the value of the location did not go unnoticed, and a man by the name of William Cole wouldn't miss his opportunity to buy up a 500-acre plot of land surrounding the would-be port in 1702. Realizing the fortune he had his hands on, he began selling off sections of his real estate gold mine. In 1726, William Fell bought a tract of land, and his son, Edward Fell, would go on to establish the town now known as Fells Point in 1763. As streets were laid out and plots of land were sold, the area quickly built up a strong shipbuilding community and, being a port town, all the amenities a weary sailor could ask for. Much like the common historical sailor tropes, when these men would come ashore, they usually wanted three things. Alcohol, women, and a place to sleep on dry land. The business owners of Fells Point seemed more than happy to provide all three of those things, and as a result, the area became notorious for its rough and rowdy guests and all the chaos they brought with them. In 1890, there was a study on vice in America, and Fells Point was highlighted as one of the cities with the most vice in the entire country. There were at least 313 bars and 103 brothels that called the point home, if that gives you any idea of just how condensed the fuel for debauchery was in this little section of the city. As you can imagine, the drunken sailors and residents could cause quite a ruckus with fights, shanghaiing, sexual violence, and even murder not being uncommon occurrences. In an effort to bring some peace to the community and provide a safe place for transient sailors, in an effort to bring some peace to the community and provide a safe space for transient sailors, the Port Mission Group purchased a building on Thames Street in 1900 and turned it into a Christian boarding house and recreational area called the Anchorage. The men would be de-loused before entering and given a room as well as a mailbox. The thought was that this would be a calm center in a tumultuous storm for those looking to safely pass their time in port before shipping back out to sea. By and large, the mission's plan seemed to be working. The anchorage became so popular that it expanded into the adjoining building next door. But in 1929, 
funding the boarding house became too taxing, and so the Siemens YMCA agreed to take over. When they did, they expanded the building even further, increasing the size to 105 rooms. Although they had plenty of them, the rooms were small and not very luxurious, leading to its nickname, the Dog House. The Siemens YMCA would run the anchorage until 1955 and play host to over 50,000 sailors before it was all said and done. After the anchorage closed its doors, the building would go on to be used as a bottling plant for a vinegar company until the 1970s when it was left abandoned. It sat vacant for years until, in 1985, new life was breathed into the building. It was turned into a 38-room bed and breakfast and renamed the Admiral Fell Inn. Seeing some success with the business, it was expanded into an 80-room hotel in 1996, and it still sits that way to this day. All in all, there are seven buildings joined together that make up the Admiral Fell Inn, with some of those dating back to the 1700s. Even though for a good portion of its history, it was used as a respite from ill intent and bad behavior, that didn't shield the building from the cold hands of death, and those who couldn't escape its icy grasp seemed to have not checked out of the hotel just yet. During its years as a boarding house, many sailors perished in the walls of the hotel due to sickness, disease, and various other causes brought on by a hard life at sea. One man in particular committed suicide on the grounds of the hotel as well. This might explain why some guests report seeing apparitions of men in sailors' outfits roaming the halls. One man who was a guest at the hotel claimed that one night, his dog started barking at something outside his bedroom window on the third floor. When he looked up to see what was causing all the commotion, he saw a sailor seemingly sitting on a fire escape that no longer exists on the exterior of the building. Somehow he was able to get some sleep that night, but when he awoke in the morning, his dog was back at it again, barking at the window. Thinking the animal just wanted to go for a walk, he put a leash on him and took him outside. The dog began frantically pulling the leash, leading the man down the road as if looking for something. When they finally came to a stop, the man realized the dog was staring straight at the gravesite of the Fell family. Ghostly sailors aren't the only apparitions seen in the walls of the Admiral, though. People have claimed to see an old woman who will sometimes walk into their rooms and exit through the wall. One particularly chilling run-in with this lady was reported by a guest who awoke in the middle of the night to find her sitting beside him on the edge of his bed. When he let out a yelp, she hushed him and told him to go back to sleep. It's believed this woman is one of the members of the port mission who would care for the sailors staying at the boarding house. But according to one man, there are more than just mission members still serving their guests. On one stay, a man who had never been to the area before was in his room when he heard a knock at the door. He wasn't expecting anyone, so he approached the door and looked through the peephole. He saw a man in a butler suit standing outside. Thinking it was an employee of the hotel, he opened the door, but when he did, no one was there. After relaying his story to a staff member, they told him that there were no butlers who worked there. As it turns out, though, there did used to be a butler on duty in that wing of the building many years ago. Speaking of staff members, they too have their own haunting experiences. The bartender claims that there are more than just the liquid kind of spirits found in the tavern area. He has seen the chandeliers swing with no air movement, lights flickering, and objects that seem to hide themselves in odd locations when no one is around. In 2003, another staff member had a rather chilling encounter. Hurricane Isabel was fast approaching, making its way up the Chesapeake Bay, so the hotel was ordered to shut down and evacuate all guests and employees. After making her final rounds to ensure that there was no one left in the building, she made her way downstairs to the lobby. She reached the bottom floor, However, she swore she could hear what sounded like a huge party with music, footsteps, and laughter going on above her, but she knew that she was the sole person left in the hotel. Our final stop takes us to room 413, the home of possibly the most tragic event that occurred within the walls of the hotel. In 1999, a man who was in town for a conference was staying in that room when an assailant barged in and bashed his skull in with a claw hammer. The killer was a homophobic man, who was going around and targeting gay men, and the guest in 413 apparently fit the bill. Although the murderer was caught after a failed assault shortly after, the victim appears to have not found peace yet. 
People who stay in room 413 say it's the most paranormally active spot in the entire place. They claim that you'll feel sudden cold spots, see shadows dart around the room, and some even say they've seen the ghost of the murdered man himself standing at the edge of the bed staring at them in the middle of the night. Multiple chilling EVPs have been caught in that room, sounding like the words murder and hammer. Even with all the activity there, and most definitely because of it, room 413 is the most requested room in the entire hotel. On the surface, the Admiral is a truly charming place. The furnishings are beautiful, the staff seem friendly, and the location is something to be envied. But the past still seems to come to life every so often. Maybe to interact with the living and feel alive, or maybe just to remind us that the past isn't gone. It lives right beside us reverberating into the modern era. And at the Admiral Fell Inn, it sometimes stays with us in the very same room. So that's the Admiral Fell Inn. What do you think about that? We've been near that, haven't we? Yeah, right next to it. No doubt we saw it. I never really knew what it was, but... Um, yeah, I mean, we had to see it. We went to the horse you came in on saloon. Yeah, which is right next door. It's a reportedly haunted... Bar. It's a cool bar. Yeah. It's actually the, the oldest still continuously running, running bar. Yeah, in America. It was the only bar in America to run before, during, and after Prohibition. Also, where the most Jack Daniels is consumed per square foot. It's a cool place. It's a great bar. It's where Edgar Allan Poe used to hang out. Cool place. Yeah. Which is also something I wanted to mention, too. <clears throat> so, like, it's sort of connected to the hotel. It's not really connected to the hotel, but it's in the general area. Um, People say that they see Edgar Allan Poe's ghost walking up and down that street, Thames Street, I think. Mm. Um, so, like, if you are staying in the hotel, there's a chance if you're looking out the window, you might see him. Hmm. Kind of cool. Because yeah. it's, like, literally right next door, I think. Yeah. Huh. That's cool. That definitely fits the bill for Fell's Point. You know, yeah. Fell's Point, especially even nowadays, is during the day, you're fine. Don't turn around, you know, don't turn around... Or turn, turn down the wrong street during the day, but at night it can, I think it can get pretty sketchy around there from what I've heard. More and more so you know, all the time. It used to be a really, like safe area no matter what time of day it was, but it's just kind of going downhill unfortunately. But it's still a really nice place to go. I, I would I would yeah. still go hang out there and go to the bars and everything. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice little section of Baltimore. It's got cobblestone streets and it's really historic you know kind of it's a pretty place yeah it's cool great record shop too oh yeah forgot about that yeah the uh sound garden shout out sound garden oh yeah awesome vinyl store that's right but uh yeah i went to college over in towson which is really close to fells point so i've spent a little bit of time down there not as much as i'd like to but um it's a nice area no i didn't know it was haunted I didn't either. I'd, I'd never heard of it until, you know, what, what actually got me onto it was that it was on TripAdvisor's uh, top 10 list of haunted hotels in America. Really? Yep. Number six. Hmm. And it was also on the Forbes uh, 25 most haunted hotels in America, too. I never knew that. Nope. There's never And there's another one in Baltimore, too. We might have to cover at some point. The Lord Baltimore. That also made some of those lists as well, as far as, huh. like, most haunted hotels in America. Yeah. No, it seems to be a lot of activity going on there. I think it'd be really cool to go stay there sometime. It's a pretty short drive. Yeah, it's not too far. I just don't want to stay at Fell's Point overnight. Oh, come on. We can go into the bar, and then we'll go in and do a little bit of ghost hunting after we... I don't want to stay overnight. Come on. Fell's Point freaks me out. I've heard too much yeah, stuff about it. You're in the night. hotel. And? Come on. I'm okay. Be fun to, like, October. Dude, we I should can, go do it. I can drive back to my house. Do it for the podcast. Within, like, an hour and 15 minutes. We can go somewhere else for do the podcast. Do it for the podcast. What? Why not? Dude, we could go stay there. We can rent room 413, and we can do some investigating and record it. Because this Phil's point. It freaks me out, man. Dude, it's it's fine. It's not that bad. Come on. It's not. Compared to the rest of the city, it's not that bad. Uh... Not to talk shit on Baltimore, but we're from the eastern shore, and it's just that we're used to a quieter life Yeah, over here. The freakiest incident, or the the report that comes out from there is the the murderer that killed a dude with a hammer yeah and that was relatively recent you know really sad story the guy that the murderer is actually still alive he's in jail oh right no now. way i didn't yeah How i didn't is he? he's i don't know i mean it was 1999 so like it oh 
it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, relatively speaking. And he's, uh, he uh, tried to murder somebody else after he murdered this guy. And somehow that dude got away and was able to ID the guy. And so they arrested him and he was charged with two life sentences in prison. So he's going to be behind bars for a while. Hmm. Um, and I, I didn't put the names in there. You can look them up. I just felt like it was, it just felt weird, I guess. Cause the, like the murderer is still alive and all and just didn't want to get into it. But, um, yeah, that room is supposedly super haunted. And they say, I've heard two different things saying that like either the, the bar is the most haunted area or room 413. Those two seem to be the two main spots. And it's kind of a weird building in the first place because when you look at it, it you can kind of tell it looks like at least two buildings from certain angles. But like I said, it they go back to the 1700s and it's seven different buildings that kind of, one was like a theater. I think there was a tavern or like hmm. lots of different build, buildings that kind of got all brought together and bought up by the Admiral Fell Inn once it became the inn itself. So you have a really diverse uh, background of locations kind of that all got tied into one which I think is pretty unique because you have they were all built at different times served different purposes so you got a lot of different energies going on there you know yeah hmm. but and the the sailors seem to be a pretty the most common apparition appearance that was probably the most people who were there yeah you know, back in the day, the, yeah, most of the people that visited there or stayed there were probably the sailors. Right. I watched this video on YouTube and I might have, I'll just, maybe I'll put a link in the show notes to it because like, I don't want to steal this guy's thunder. I got this information from this guy who is like a, almost like a tour guide. Um, and he was the one that was relaying the information about the 313 bars and 103 brothels in the area. That's insane. That's wild. He said that if you extrapolate that to today's population, so they said that uh, what that meant was there was a bar for every 103 people in Fells Point. And Fells Point isn't that big. Exactly. And if you extrapolate that to today with the population size that it is now, there would be a thousand bars in uh, Fells Point. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Just nuts. That's crazy. Yeah. So it was a wild place back in the day. Yeah. Had the sailors coming out. They've been at sea forever. Just taking and they just, advantage of the sailors. Yeah. And there were even stories of people being shanghai where, like, they would come ashore and the bartenders, or some of them, were in on it with these other ship captains who would just, like, okay, if you drug this guy for me and get him onto my boat, I'll give you some money. And they would just drug people take them out on the boat and basically it was almost like forced labor out Dang. on the ship. So that's what Shanghai is. Um, Good grief. And uh, other accounts of people who would uh, like wait for the sailors to come to shore and they would need money. Some of the sailors wouldn't have a whole lot of cash on them. And so they'd be like, yeah, we'll cover your expenses for now and you're going to pay us back. Mm -hmm. And they would get them super drunk and then would like wake them up and be like, Hey, you need to pay your bill. Now you got all this money and stuff. And they would be like, I can't pay it. I didn't make any money while I was here. And they're like, well, I guess you better go on, get on that ship. So they were like in cahoots with the captains and the bartender. It was like Jeez. a whole thing. Um, and also there were, uh, I didn't, I didn't find a whole lot of like hard information on it, but it was also apparently a hot spot for like mobsters back in the 1920s. Um, well, yeah, if it's a brothel and stuff like that, you yeah, have to assume a lot of, Shady people come with it. Yeah. So not even just the, I mean, the hotel itself is supposed to be really haunted, but the surrounding area with the whole story of, you know, Edgar Allan Poe being found outside on the street, essentially right outside the hotel, really yeah. outside of the bar right next door. Um, that was the last place they, anybody saw him alive before they took him to the hospital and he later died. But yeah, it's a uh, kind of, a building like i say it if you look up online the pictures of it it just looks really it's like a, a good mixture of old architecture with like modern ish furnishings uh so it doesn't really come off as a place that looks haunted like it doesn't really look that creepy but well it doesn't have to be no and that's what i i feel like it's so like um uh 
I mean, there are a lot of places like that. Like, look at the Lizzie Borden house. Yeah. That just looks like a Victorian. Neat old house. Yeah. But, like, this place, like, it looks fairly modern inside. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't look completely, it doesn't look like it was built in the 1700s. Like, it's very well preserved. It's, you know, but it's, I feel like that, it's almost like a facade because so many people have claim stuff there it's apparently like ongoing all the time people are constantly going there to do investigations and they're constantly reporting like people hear footsteps they also uh there's like a ghost dog apparently in the hallways that runs up and down and it's also a uh, pet friendly place as well so if you want to bring your dog you can do that but well there's the explanation of a ghost dog right some poor someone new kilroy keeled over in the hallway and I was just saying that. I wasn't saying a dog died in there. I was just saying someone went there and knowing that it was haunted. Heard a dog running around outside and they were like, and they didn't know it was pet friendly. So then they were like, there's a ghost dog out here, man. I swear I saw it. <laughs> didn't know you could have a dog here. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> saying dog died in there. Oh my God, I saw a dog in the hallway. It must be a ghost. Well, if you didn't know that there were ghosts. The dogs were allowed, and you knew that, you know, the place was haunted. What would you think? You had a dog running around outside. Yeah. But, I mean, I think it's pretty... From what I've heard, it's like a like the hotel is known for being pet-friendly. I guess it's not something everybody oh. would know. But, like, it's they make it very apparent that, like, it is a pet-friendly place. But I think the the one that creeps me out the most, as far as, like, the hauntings go, is the woman who oh that one st- him? yeah dude i'd be out of there i would lose my shit and that's i wish that like i could find full stories about that like what did he do after that what do you do when like, <laughs> it's not like he just went like <laughs> lady like, shh him and he was just like okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> went back to bed like I'd be, I'd be out of there. I wouldn't, I, even grab, I wouldn't even grab my stuff. No. I would just grab my phone and my wallet and go. I would look like a freaking cartoon, legs spinning in the air, taking off running. Ice cloud behind me. Yeah. Like, and there apparently there are people that have just checked out and been like, "I'm not staying here." Like, I don't blame them. Yeah, that freaked me out. Um, and it's apparently a hot spot for uh, celebrities too. Blake Shelton has stayed there. What? And yeah, like a whole bunch of really famous people have stayed there. The record store. Yeah, which that's what, makes sense. Yeah, like, that's the point. You walk in the record store, and man, there's, you know, you look on the walls of the people that have been there. Shine has been there. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Ludacris. Ludacris has been there. Yeah. So there's no wonder that celebrities have been there. Well, it's it's also just like, the, it's, if you ask me, it's the nicest part of Baltimore. Probably, yeah. It's close to the Inner Harbor, you know. There's a lot of stuff to do, and but... That whole area is, there are lots of reports of haunted places up and down Fells Point and throughout Baltimore as well, but the Fells Point seems to be a kind of a hot spot for different haunted locations. And did, did Edgar Allan Poe ever stay there? Do you know? I don't know. I didn't see anything that said he did. It doesn't mean he never did, but he also had a house in Baltimore, so I don't know if he would ever really have a need to stay there. Brothel. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I don't, I don't think he was into that either, though. He was just a drunk, you think? No, that's a misconception, too. He wasn't, like, really just always a, a drunk, either. Like, the more you read about him, the more you realize, like, it's... A lot of that's been exaggerated to a point. He did, like, have drinking problems at certain points, but, like, he wasn't just a crazy drunk guy all the time. But I think he, he gets a bad rap. Some say that... Just a little sidetrack here. Some say that he had, uh... You know, he had a pet raccoon... Yeah. Some people say he died of rabies. No, that it it looks like he was um either poisoned, they think, or um oh, I listened to uh, to a podcast a while ago about it. I'm blanking on the title. It was back in October. Um someone did a special about him and we still don't know, but they've all but ruled out rabies at this point based mm. on like the records that they did have but it seems like the doctor may have had something to do with his death 
which is oh, that's not cool. weird. There's like a weird conspiracy theory about that he. We might never know. Yeah, we probably never will. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just the fact that like he was found outside of there is also kind of interesting. Where it's just the whole place seems to be crawling with ghosts. If you look up reports. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, it's no wonder, man. They have three hundred some bars and hundred and three brothels. Yeah, lots of sexual violence and murders Monsters in the area and, and a lot of shady stuff that probably people didn't see yeah a lot of skeevy people yeah and just a rough for one thing it was a rougher time to live back then anyway oh yeah so people were bound to you know people died in bar fights people got killed by mobsters and it was just a people died from probably you know I'm cold sometimes, you know? Yeah, and that's what most of the deaths... There, I couldn't find any record of how many sailors died in the boarding house, but it was a lot, apparently. Like, a, people would be sick, you know, they'd get scurvy, or they'd develop some kind of, like, pneumonia from being out in the mm-hmm. ocean, or whatever, and would come to port and be sick and show up to specifically to that place because they knew that there was going to be people there to take care of them, and they would pass away Hmm. so it's got a really tragic and scattered backstory it was kind of a hard thing to piece together because of the how all the buildings that kind of made the whole place one what it is today and all the different purposes that they served and all the different reports and the people that died there and a lot of it's kind of general there's not a lot of specifics but it's definitely a place with a very, you know, tragic, tragedy-riddled past, I guess the way to put it. Did any, uh, like, famous ghost hunting teams go there at all? Like Not that I know. Or ghost adventures or... So, I found this one thing. I think we ought to, like, have a drink sometime and watch it because it looks like it's... It's like a lower-budget um, ghost hunting TV show, they call it, but I feel like it was just a web series. It's, it's a bit older, but they went there. I don't, I'm blanking on the name. Ghost uh, Detectives, I think is what it's called. Mm. Um, and it, it you know, just looks like a very low-budget show. But it'd be interesting just to watch. I didn't watch the whole thing just because I wanted to get the history section to see if they mentioned more about the history of it. And they interviewed the hotel manager and stuff like that. But when they got into the investigation parts, it was just kind of like, okay, I'm tuning out now. But, yeah, as far as, like, no, TAPS hasn't investigated. I don't think Ghost Adventures has. Um, Because it being, if it was that high up on, you know, the most haunted locations in America, you would think some big paranormal team would go there. You'd think so. I don't know why they haven't. You know, they really should. But someone used to write a letter to Jason Hawes. You can. I'll do it. Do it. I'm going to reach out to him. Think he has an Instagram? Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. Try him or Steve or Tango. You can try him one of them. Grant with his little other show. Let's reach out. They, to him. I'm sure they do. I want to do it from the podcast. Yeah, see if we can get in touch with them. That'd be kind of cool. Get an interview with them. Yeah. Hopefully, a new episode coming up, people. Yeah, Jason Halls or Steve or Tango. They're going to be on the show. Or Grant. <laughs> Serious. Yeah. It's worth a shot. Yeah, why not? I mean. He works for Roto Rooter. Like, <laughs> I don't think he works for Roto Rooter anymore. I mean, he used to. So it's not like he's not like some crazy celebrity like Joe Rogan. We can't get a hold of. Hey, we might get him. You don't know. Damn, we're not getting Joe Rogan. Don't <laughs> talk about Bigfoot with me. <laughs> I think me and him share the same feeling about that. <laughs> He'll talk about aliens with me. So we'll time to launch. I know we can get a hold of him. <laughs> but I don't want to talk to that guy. The next time you're in Baltimore looking for a good drink and a warm bed, seek out the Admiral Fell Inn. If you're daring enough, ask for room 413. Just don't be surprised if you wake up with some unexpected guests sharing your room. This has been the Admiral Fell Inn. Stick around to hear about the Crescent Hotel.
When people think the word hotel, they think relaxation, time away from home, or perhaps even a honeymoon. But there is a hotel that was once a place where people will go to be healed of illness or even deadly disease. But unfortunately, many of the hotel's guests wouldn't find the healing they were looking for. And even worse yet, some of these guests would never live to tell their story. This is the Crescent Hotel. Powell Clayton, a former governor of Arkansas, from 1868 to 1870 created a company with the help of some investors. The company would be named Eureka Springs Improvement Company. You see, at the time, the water that came from the Ozark Mountain Range was thought to have healing properties and was said to cure all types of ailments and pains. So taking advantage of the so-called healing waters, Clayton and his investors would have a 78-room resort and spa made from stone with 18-inch thick walls, towers, and balconies overlooking the valley below. News of the healing waters spread throughout the nation, and people would flock to the beautiful hotel to try and heal their pains. But the whirlwind of guests visiting the Grand Hotel would soon begin to grind to a halt as people were beginning to realize the healing waters of the Ozarks have no healing ability after all. By the year 1908, the hotel was no longer being used as a hotel at all. Rather, it was being used as a college and a conservatory for young women and would only operate as a hotel in the summers. This would last until the year 1924, when the cost of running the college became so high and the college-slash-resort would be forced to close. Sitting abandoned for years, the marvelous building was just beginning to waste away. When in 1937, a man named Norman Baker bought the hotel and reopened it as a cancer hospital. Baker was advertising cures that would require no surgery or extensive tests, while having no background in medicine whatsoever. But he was claiming that people would walk out of there cancer-free. Well, what was unknown to many of his patients is that Baker was fronting a scam. He was making medical elixirs to heal the suffering cancer patients, and to no surprise, his elixirs had no effect to any illness. Actually, an investigation that took place revealed that his elixirs were most likely quickening the effects of the illnesses, and as many as 44 people would die during their stay at the so-called hospital. It was also reported by that at the end of the time of his running the hospital, Baker frauded patients out of $4 million. Baker would be arrested and sentenced to four years in Leavenworth. The hotel would continue to jump from owner to owner until 1997, when a couple bought the hotel. Knowing that the hotel had a haunted reputation, they hired two mediums to check out the house. Both of them were walking through when they stopped at one particular spot, and they said that there was a portal to the other side. The spot in the house where the mediums claimed this was directly above the morgue, which is now the basement. Of the hotel. In 1885, during the hotel's construction, a stonemason named Michael was doing work on the roof when suddenly he lost his balance and fell to his death on the second floor. The place where he died is now room 218 and is said to be the most haunted room in the hotel. Guests who have stayed in the room claim to see hands emerging from the mirror in the bathroom, the door opening and closing, loud bangs, and even sounds of a man screaming. Another famous ghost that is said to haunt the hotel is that of Irene Castle. Irene is a very well-known ballroom dancer and Broadway star at the time. Irene moved to Eureka Springs in 1959 to be closer to her son after her husband passed away. Irene only lived a few blocks from the hotel, but she spent a lot of time there attending social events. After her passing in 1969, it is reported that her ghosts can still be seen in the hotel. On one occasion, a family was visiting the hotel. The mother of the family was giving her daughter a bath when the little girl began to have a conversation with a female apparition. During the conversation, the girl would use words like tango, ballerina, and castle. Room 419 of the hotel also seems to have a lot of activity from one particular ghost as well. This is the spirit of Theodora. It is thought that she was a former cancer patient. This is because on some reports, people say that they have spoken to her, and she introduced herself as a cancer patient, and then vanished. Theodora has also been known to clean up around the room. One report comes in that the room had been tidied up while the housekeepers weren't around. When the hotel was a cancer hospital, 
The third floor was known as the pain ward. This is where people would be brought before they died. Many guests have claimed to hear squeaky wheels moving in the hallway, but the most disturbing report is that some guests have seen a nurse, dressed in white, pushing a gurney with a body on it. The nurse would eventually disappear as soon as she reached the end of the hallway. The laundry room is another area of the hotel that has a lot of activity. The laundry room is located right next to what used to be the morgue of the old hospital. One frightening experience comes from a maintenance worker. He said that one night all the washers and dryers turned on by themselves with no one around. But perhaps the most haunted room in the entire hotel is the dining room. One report comes in when a waitress was looking in a mirror when she saw a man and a woman getting married. She saw the groom turn, and as they locked eyes, the couple vanished. Another experience in the dining room occurred around Christmas. A Christmas tree with presents underneath it was moved from one side of the room to the other, along with all the chairs that had been moved facing toward the tree with no one around to move it. It sounds like there are a lot of full-body apparition activities going on there. It's a lot of activity. It's and kind I, of crazy. I really had to pick through and pick out the ones that really, you know, caught my eye because there's a lot. There are a lot. That's pretty wild. I mean, it makes sense based on the history, you know. <sighs> Such a... What a douchebag. It kind of makes me cringe a little bit. Yeah. Some dude that doesn't know medicine whatsoever and started making elixirs and telling people he could cure them with cancer. Yeah, like the, frauded them out of over four million dollars. And over forty four people died. The like in the morgue. Taking advantage of super desperate people. People who are in pain. Yeah. And like all they want is to live through this awful disease. And he's like, Yeah, no, I got you. I got the cure. I got you just have to come here and drink this stuff and you'll be great. And fuck. I took a I took a snapshot of one of the I came by one of his elixirs, what was in one of his elixirs. And it's called Formula Five, and what what's in it is alcohol, glycerol, carbolic acid, ground watermelon seed, corn silk, and clover leaves. The heck! So like it was just random stuff that he was just giving people, and a lot of times this would make. You know, it wouldn't help them. It would only make their illness worse, apparently. And, so you know, crazy. no doubt. You're giving them all this weird stuff. Yeah. You have no idea what the effects are. Yeah. You're just you like, yeah, don't. alcohol and caloric acid and all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, that is the worst kind of charlatan. Like, ugh, it's disgusting. Yeah. There's also something, too. So, like, you mentioned the water, you know, being the healing water coming out of the Ozarks. And how the place was built out of stone. And there's there are reports of, and I think it's they specifically talk about limestone. I don't know what kind of stone this place is built out of. Some of it's limestone, but not all of it. But there are uh, a lot of people that claim that the running water in limestone creates some kind of energy. energy. Yeah. yeah. So I've heard that before. Kind of could be like amplifying the activity there i guess if that's if there's anything to that it could be yeah it also just could be very place with a very dark past right very unsettling but it also it has you know good things about it like the the girl saw the waitress who saw the couple getting married in the dining room yeah in the mirror she saw it in the mirror and as soon as the groom and her locked eyes they the couple vanished it's so crazy. But it's not dark. Right. So why would that be there, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I think people, if if ghosts are real and nothing necessarily super tragic happened to them that especially caused their death, I think it's just as likely that that same kind of whatever you want to call it, energy that gets imprinted on a location could also happen from like the happiest moment of your life. It doesn't have to be the worst, maybe. It's like Irene Castle. Yeah. She passed away. She didn't pass away in the hotel. She only visited there. Yeah. She lived a few blocks away from it. Right. But she loved that place. Yeah, she went there a lot. Which, Which is, is one of the cooler reports, is the little girl talking to her and using words like ballerina, ballerina, tango, and castle. Yeah. It's like using dancing words and even her last name. Yeah. 
That's pretty wild. That's that was a cool one that stuck out. Yeah, yeah, that was really interesting. But it's not. That's not malicious. No. But the one that did freak me out was the nurse. Yeah, that is. I also like made a note of that. It's weird how you hear of the lady in white everywhere. That's essentially like the nurse in the white gown. You hear of the lady in the white dress. That That is a common trope throughout ghost stories all over the world, really, but in America especially. It, and like you see them in every, almost, not almost every cemetery, but a lot of cemeteries will have a yeah. lady in white. Or this house has a lady in white. It's like, what? what is it about that? Like, I th- well, I think in this instance, it was just, that's what nurses, nurses wore. wore back yeah. then. They just wore white gowns. You know, I think that's all that was. Yeah. But apparently people hear squeaking wheels and seeing her pushing a body. <sighs> and she vanishes as soon as she hits the end of the hallway. Yeah, no thanks. That's creepy. The apparitions freak me out. <laughs> that's so crazy. And the hands coming out of the mirror. Yeah. That's terrifying. Yeah. Like, that's horror movie shit. Yeah. Yeah, that guy, that was the stonemason, Michael, who apparently died when he the house is being under construction or the hotel was under construction and he fell into what is now that room yeah and why the mirror i don't know there there must be something there too because like we when i covered the myrtle's plantation the mirror had a lot to even the other even the mirror in the dining room right for some reason mirrors seem to catch energy or something i don't know it's like a look into the past yeah is it I don't I don't even I mean it's all conjecture but like that's just I don't it's just weird like are are the mirrors there original to the like are they antique I don't know or you know that's what because I I get any kind of ghost that's attached to an object yeah right I I get that but if it's say it's just like a modern day mirror and you only see stuff in the mirror like why well that's the Myrtle's plantation yeah they had the original mirror there but they had to keep replacing it because it was just getting old yeah. I think they replaced it three times as far as I know and they still see stuff in it that's and see now maybe it's attached to the frame or the if it's on or like maybe a, just the location itself of the mirror right that could be too yeah I don't know yeah I mean it's like the Sorrel Weed House too that mirror they have in there where people catch pictures of supposed apparitions in it yeah it's just odd uh, yeah I don't know why mirrors and ghosts I don't know I would love to go stay at the Crescent sometime that'd be cool we have family in Arkansas yeah, is it close to Little Rock I don't know I didn't look I'll have to check that out well they're in the Ozark Mountains I don't think they're close to Ozark yeah it'd be cool to visit though go yeah. on a hiking trip in the Ozarks yeah ooh Let's there's see. an idea yeah there we go oh. go hiking bring Miles and Raymond yeah not tell them it's haunted. Yeah. Really freak them out freak when they see a nurse in the <laughs> yeah. hallway. And he's like, hey, man. <laughs> I think there's something here. <laughs> but no, it's... This one really caught my attention just because of how twisted this guy must have been. Norman yeah. Baker. Like, what a douche. Yeah. 44 people died in the morgue. It's like, I just can't wrap... Like, stuff like that makes my blood boil. Oh, like, I know. It's like, that someone can be that twisted yeah. just to get money out of you. Yeah. And not care if you died or not. Just throwing stuff in a bottle and giving it to you. Yeah. I mean, anybody setting up any kind of scam alone is, if you're even just like phone scammers, piss me off. Yeah. But like when you bring it to the level of like you're playing with someone's life, not just their bank account. And other people's lives. Yeah. The loved the family. ones. Family. Yeah. Yeah. Like what a disgusting piece of trash. Yeah. Ugh. But it makes sense again that that place would contain apparitions. It's it's just so riddled with death and despair and hopelessness. It's just that's the perfect recipe for a haunting. And that one apparition um, says that you know people have talked to her. She said, "I'm a cancer patient," and then vanished. And sometimes she's been known to tidy up the room, like clean up parts of the room. And move furniture around and stuff like that. Yeah. That's, and the story with the Christmas tree, too. Yeah, so the Christmas tree had all presents underneath of it, and it was in the dining room. 
and it was moved, totally moved, to the other side of the room, and all the chairs in the room were facing it. That's so crazy. With no one around. To come back to something like that, like... You, you gotta you think leave. you're losing your mind. Yeah. Dude, it was like what happened to me with my cup, and the hacky sack, and the oh, yeah. bottle caps. It's a weird thing to, to leave something, Yeah. and even just for like five minutes... And then come back into the room, and it's stuff has moved. Like clearly, like things have moved around, and it's like, who who did that? Well, what about the 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 DVD, the DVD that your camera picked? Up? <laughs> yeah, we have that you have video of that. I, now. I should, yeah, it's you ought to post that up on the Instagram. Yeah, if you maybe. can. I feel like it's weird because it's like my room, but I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. Everyone can see all your Bigfoot stuff st- sitting up in here. Yeah, I guess I can show it off. What do you have? I mean, what do you have? You don't have anything in here important showing? No, it's just weird because it's like my bedroom. I don't know. I put the camera up and I caught something, so I guess I should post it, or else it's not really like what am I doing? Why catch it? Yeah, why keep it? Yeah, maybe I'll post it up. I feel like I want to save it. Let's tease it. We're gonna tease it here. I was gonna say we use that as like to help us talk to Jason. <laughs> Steve oh, and Tango, and yeah, we got an in. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, because we've had stuff going on at our house for a while. Ever since it got renovated, yeah. actually, it's been a lot of weird stuff here. I think stuff's picking back up too. I was. Um, <laughs> I moved out. I wouldn't know. It, it's, it seems like I don't know why recently. All of a sudden, I don't know if it's because I moved the the desk in here, but like and broke down my drum set and everything, and like changed the <laughs> changed the feng shui of the room or something. But, like, I was laying in bed the other night, and there was, like, I think it was something about those drums. Something was moving over here. Like, I clearly heard something. I was, like, drifting off, and I was like, what the heck was that? And then last night, I was over at a buddy's house and was helping Miles paint and all that. And we were standing there. I had I picked up my cup off the, um, the workbench in his garage, and I went to, like, turn and walk away. And, like, on the other end of the bench something moved we didn't know what it was but like clearly something fell over or something and it was like it doesn't move when you touch it it's not on wheels or anything it's like grounded and i was like dude i'm telling you stuff's following me around and i showed him the video he hadn't seen it yet what did he think of it he kind of just shook his head didn't know what to make of it no you don't it's it's a dvd falls off of his he has a stack of dvds sitting on his dresser and you can see one dvd just Fall off. Yeah. And it looks like something push it off, but there's nothing there on camera. It's the craziest thing. It wasn't precariously perched. I mean, the door shut. Like, the camera's set up so you can pretty much see my entire room. It's set up in a corner. And I was downstairs at the time when it happened. And, like, I was watching a movie. And I came up to go to bed, and a DVD was just sitting on the floor. And I was like, what the heck? I don't think I did that. I was like, oh my God, the camera. I like popped it up real quick and looked at it and oh, there it was. It's freaky, man. It's so weird. Like I finally feel like I'm not crazy anymore because when that <laughs> the whole reason why I bought that was because of the cup incident where I like yeah. so what happened was I, I was about to go to bed and I had I just cleaned out a backpack and I had a, a hacky sack and some bottle caps that I had saved and I sat them on my dresser way earlier in the night and before I went to bed, I put down a, a glass of water on the dresser, and then I went out of the room and went and brushed my teeth, and when I came back, the hacky sack and those three bottle caps were sitting in my drink, and I just, I didn't know what to, like, it just kind of broke my brain, and I knew that, like, we had stuff happen, you know, in the house for a while, like, you hear some stuff, and every now and then you like, hear what sounds like footsteps or you I've, I've thought like people were home before and I'd go downstairs and nobody was home like it sounded like people were talking and it's just weird stuff like that but nothing that was ever like concrete really and with that starting with that it was the stuff in my drink like there's no way that could have gotten in there by itself yeah. and I know I didn't do it and nobody else was here so like when I caught that on camera of the DVD moving I finally was like yes this is it. Like, I'm not crazy. <laughs> and I still don't know what to make of it, but, like, why? Yeah. Don't like Family Guy. I guess not. That was the only DVD that got pushed off. <laughs> it left all the Halloween movies alone. 
Hey, that was the it was the horror movies were underneath of that, and Family Guy was on the top. And like, this doesn't go there. <laughs> Pushed it off. This <laughs> yeah. or something that has me in it. It's filth. But no, it, th- there's no question that I I think the the Crescent is haunted. Yeah, there's so much dark energy and. There's all there's constant reports coming out. Like I say, I had to nitpick and really sift through all the reports because there's so many coming from it. Have there been any major investigations of it? Taps have done an investigation there years ago. They've done it. Um, a couple other paranormal ones uh, teams have gone there. I don't know the names of them, but yeah, no Taps has. Well, I know it's it's a pretty famous haunted place. When I was going through lists of different haunted hotels for this episode that was one of them that popped up quite a few times so it it must have a lot of activity obviously based on the essay you have there yeah i mean and most of them you know sometimes it's just the average loud noises bangs footsteps sometimes they're stuff moving but the apparitions seems to be a lot of apparitions yeah that's weird that is like the concentration of that because usually like you you see like there are one or two like reported apparitions that haunt a place but like as many have been reported there on top of all the other activities so it's like they're physically moving the chairs yeah you're seeing the apparitions you're hearing weird noises and they all seem to have direct ties to to the history of the hotel and some of them are intelligent because some of them talk to people, respond to right. questions. And other ones like uh, Michael, the ghost who, the guy who died, the stonemason, some people say they can hear screaming and it sounds like it's falling. Ugh. So some of them are residual too, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of runs the whole gambit. Yeah, stuff being moved, seeing stuff, intelligent, residual. <laughs> it's... It's a crazy place. You want haunted places? That's the buffet. Yeah. Nothing malicious. Nothing that I've found that anyone's gotten hurt or there's any danger behind it, but it's just freak you out. <laughs> it's crazy. Seems like a super active place. Yeah. This has been the Crescent Hotel. This concludes tonight's episode of the Black Flame Podcast. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Black Flame Podcast. Be sure to come back next week for a new episode. And remember, stay spooky.